<laughs> yeah, right. Y'all didn't hear that. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to um, Real Talk with Devin Will. Good morning. It's another Monday morning. I trust that you are well and you had a great weekend. Good and morning. It is always good to be with you guys on, on, on Monday morning. It's always good to hear um, that people watch the program. Um, we were, what was that? When was that? Last? Last Sunday. Sunday or Saturday? Where were we? At the funeral. At the memorial, memorial uh, for our, 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 friend. our dear friend Wanda Hope. Um, we learned that people were watching this this Facebook broadcast. And I really, I personally didn't have any idea they were watching. Um, and they mentioned some specific things um, about the Facebook um, portion of it and the YouTube portion of it. Uh, I was like, really? So they sort of proved to me that they were really watching. I was like, wow. So that's always kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Isn't that kind of weird? Yes. Yeah. It's like I like it. I mean, it's nice. It really is. But it was just it was just kind of weird. So for those of you who are watching and those of you who are supporting us, thank you so much. Uh, we really really appreciate it. All right. Um, topic today is, I guess, frankly, in 1973, would have been yes. a bing bang boom topic, right? Oh yeah. my gosh! It would have been a big no no Co- cohabitation. As a matter of fact, <laughs> the, the 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 subject we're talking about um, today was actually illegal in the state of Florida for for oh, a long for a I long didn't time. Know that. Cohabitation. Cohabitation. Big legal no no, um, and and a lot of places around the country really, um, and particularly in the South, cohabitation was bad, was illegal. Uh, so we're going to talk. We're, we're going to talk about that a little bit because I still think it's a topic worth discussing um, when you're talking about relationships, when you're talking about marriage, and and some of the things that people say, and just because they say them doesn't mean they're true. Uh, doesn't mean that it's helpful. Um, it, is, it 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 just doesn't. And I think it's important that that we at least that people at least have that conversation anymore. That you just don't gloss over it. Um, uh, cohabitating together before marriage is just as important nowadays as the whole marriage thing, because cohabitating together, you know, a lot of people start buying houses together and they have car loans together. They do a lot of things when they're not legally bound to each other. And it can make it very difficult when you, if, when, or if you separate. So it's not so easily like it was, you know, but, you know, people would sneak and do it. And I knew a lot of people that that lived together when I was a little girl and I thought they were married, you know, and and you find out years later, those people were never married. And the sometimes they had children in other places and, you know, things were kept more secretive back when we were younger than they are now. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it it, it, it just I mean it you know cohabitation doesn't have the stigma um, mm-hmm. that it had when you know when I was you know twelve thirteen years old. Uh, I don't even know if I even knew anything like that when I was twelve thirteen years old. I, I didn't know. <laughs> well, it was going on, but you didn't I'd understand. Have an, I'd have it. I guess I'd it have, was. I'd have it. It was like that I'm, in my hometown. I'm sure, but I, I grew up in a bigger town, so I yeah. I ain't know as much. I ain't know. I just swear to you, I don't have any idea <laughs> uh, that it was even a thing. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know. I I think I don't think I really figured figured any of that out until I was. Probably, uh, probably a senior in high school or whatever, 17, 18 years old, um, that there was this thing called cohabitation or this thing called living together. Uh, I, I, I just didn't have any idea. Um, but um, I did find out later, you know, it was a big, it was a big deal to a, to a lot of people. Now, a lot of people in, in, in of course, the, the, the faith community had big, you know, issues that was, with big it. issues with it. Um, and... The, and according to their faith, they have a right to have an issue with. And them. the pushback, but the pushback was this: the pushback was that you ha- that it. A lot of times, people will say, "Well, it just makes sense for us financially, uh, mm-hmm. because then you could, you know, what you could pool your funds and mm-hmm. you pool your money, and um, 
because if you were living, if you if he had a place and you had a place, that's two rents or, that you're paying for or mortgages, whatever you have. And you have two, you know, all the bills for that go along with the home, both of them are paying them. So good morning, BJ. Good morning, Charlie and Nancy. Um, so it, it, it just made sense financially for people to, to let's just move into your place and then we only have one rent and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, and, and for some people, I, I, I guess that that was okay. Now. Hello, Art. You ready? Y'all ready? Ready? Yeah. Now here's the deal. Now, also, part of that was that, that people were being taught, society was telling people um, they had to be taught, that there are certain things that you had to sort of practice. You had to find out if you were compatible. Um, and, and let's be open and frank. Well, now that, now, now that all our parents have gone, now all our parents, parents have, go, have gone, to gone to heaven. We live together. Now, I'm, I, I was thinking about this last night while I was up, you know, rearranging. To, so, so, you like the, so you like the new set? You like, you like the way it is? Yeah, I was up to one o'clock in the morning. Um, I was thinking about this. I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I learned anything about Deborah in that time that was so important that it would have made the difference one way or another. I just don't know if I learned anything that I was like, oh my God, I'm so I'm glad. I'm her. so glad we lived together because if I if we hadn't lived together, I would have known, I would have known that. Um I don't I don't think so. And I don't know if Debbie learned anything about me during that time that um would have would have sealed the deal or or or, or blown the whole thing. Probably more likely to blow the whole thing than to seal the deal. I'm guessing um, it, it no, might have worked. I did not. It, it might have worked more to the negative than the, than the positive. So that whole idea that you have to because you have to see if you're com that's, compatible. That's and... nonsense. That's really nonsense. That's nonsense. Um, most times, I mean, I mean, the the numbers say that there isn't any better chance that you will get married or stay married if you Any live longer. together beforehand or not. Most studies say it doesn't make a difference. In fact, some studies say that they're, you're more likely to get divorced, especially if you live together at the age that we did, when we, you know, in your early 20s, because a lot of times if, if you start dating somebody and then you all you live together and then eventually marry and you're so young a lot of especially um women who don't get a chance to live on their own and do their own thing and be you know be their own woman if they don't have that opportunity a lot of them when they get older and you know and they still look good and the kids are gone and stuff they're I want to go out with my friends. I want to do this and I want to do that. And you feel like you missed out on some things. And that's why you see a lot of people that get married that young. And then later on, they, they are ready to, to, to have a divorce after 30 years. Makes no sense to me. Well, you know, and, 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 and that's, and that, and that's really the thing. So, um, so if the idea that you are going to live together, that you are going to cohabitate, uh, because you think that that's the way to to sort of practice marriage. One of the words that bothers me most that people use now is wifey. Um, I don't like it because it really denigrates what a wife really is. Um, it sort of makes makes the whole wife name like a nickname, um, which means that which, which tells me right away that you're not serious about it. <clears throat> And in a cohabitational relationship, the door for both parties is always open. It's just always open. Yeah. That whole and, and people and people like you, like you said, like Debbie said before, um, people have children, uh, people buy houses, which has got to be the most dumbass thing in the world that you would enter into an agreement for 15 or 30 years to buy a house. And spend all that money and with somebody committed to well, somebody who, who that you're not that you're not married to. The chances of you buying a house with your best friend, just you and your you 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 and your boy say, hey, listen, man, let's buy this house. They're not if you do that, you've got this much paperwork of, of contracts and agreements and the like. 
if you're if, I mean, if you're going to do that because it's because then it's just a business relationship. So I so this idea that you would turn um, something that shouldn't be just a business relationship into a business relationship seems like you don't care about the other side like, and that you give yourself an exit ramp to get out. And I think that that's what mm -hmm. people do when they live together. You always mm -hmm. give yourself an exit ramp. And you're just faking that you're married. You walk around like you're married. And, and, and you know what? But you can leave at any time. And people do. They do. Because a lot, the, a lot of the studies show that people that l cohabitate before they get, that are just, you know, dating and live together, they argue more than married people do. And I feel like the reason why is because you, you're not in a contract with this person. So um, a lot of times if the guy, if he wants to stay out late, if he wanted to, you know, I'm not married to you. I'm not obligated. Hi, Denise. I'm not obligated to you. So, and then if you come home, he comes home or she come home late or whatever like that, you, you feel like, well, we're just dating. Well, What's and the, the thing is, deal? you know, and, and people, people fool, them, people fool themselves. That the idea is that if, you, that if you're not married and, and even if you're living together, you're too sick, you're, you're still two single people. Yes, you are. Now you may say, well, you know what? I'm living with my boyfriend. And we're committed. We're committed. No, you're still two single people. <laughs> And you still have the rights of single people. So when they don't come home, when you're sitting home pretending to be somebody's wife, and wifey. they don't come, wifey, oh God, I hate that. <laughs> um, you know, when, when you're sitting home pretending to be somebody's wife, and you think that um, he should be treating you like a wife, he has no, let me help you, he's got no obligation to treat you like a wife. And she's got no obligation at all to treat you like you or her husband. Okay, I'll get it. I don't know why that's doing that. But he has no obligation at all to treat you like a husband. None. Zero. Which is why they are, people argue more. Because mm -hmm. there's frankly less at stake. Yeah. Very people believe that they have more at stake because ultimately everything they do. Is, is joined together and all your assets that you have. Most oh. things that you do when you're mm -hmm. married are are together, sign contracts and different things like that. So uh, depending on the states that you live in, you know, <laughs> half of what he has is mine and half of what she has is yours. Half. Half. <laughs> half. So... <laughs> <laughs> Half. But when, if you're living together, nothing. Nothing. Zero. No and protection. and the the person the one of the people that is one of the notorious live together people that have been doing it for years is Oprah. And I was watching uh, her interview um, Tina Turner, who finally who married her. Um, live, in. live in after so many years. And, and she told Oprah that a lot of legal things that, you know, that don't matter because you and Stedman are just living together will change if you married. And you may want to consider thinking about that because a lot of things he could lose if you should pass and a lot of things you could lose out on it. But Oprah don't care. Oprah don't well, when you're a billionaire, um, the, the <laughs> amount of money you have buffers you from the same crap, um, from this, from re re really the same crap that the rest of us have to deal with. Uh, so, and that, and but that's kind of a problem though, because a, because a lot of people see the celebrities doing that, and then they just and they and I don't know how y'all, I don't know, I don't understand y'all, how y'all follow the example of somebody who's who's got a billion dollars, who, or who makes $20 million from, from, from one motion picture, how about you would follow that example as, as, as that's not anywhere near a realistic, a realistic situation. Uh, like Oprah's situation with Stedman is just ridiculous. Um, they're obviously in a business relationship. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're, they're in a business relationship. Um, whatever, whatever. With benefits. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> that's part of the contract, I guess. <laughs> Um, but um, but that's you know but but the idea for regular folks is that's probably not the best situation and and I think and, and we've got some comments in, in you know what in the Facebook chat room that say um, been there done that it's a joke we'll never do it again it's it's I mean, this idea even that if you talk to people more people will tell you that it was a nightmare than it was good mm -hmm. so if you see somebody. 
that it worked out for, that it wasn't that it wasn't damaging to. We are the anomaly. Yeah. Now we you know when we started this, we told you that we weren't perfect, um, no, and we're that not. we didn't do everything right. Um, but um, and because of that, sometimes you can see you can still see the pitfalls. You know, just because you didn't rob a bank doesn't mean that you <laughs> that you don't have any opinion on robbing banks. That robbing banks is a bad thing. Well, you've never done it before. How do you know? <laughs> you know, it, 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 that's silly. Uh, well, you live together. Oh, it worked out for you. Yeah, that's how I know that, it pro- I, that I pay attention to it and probably won't work out for you because it doesn't work out for most people. Mm-hmm. We're the anomaly. Um, and, 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 and I think that we, you should really have that conversation um, as you are growing. Um that's and, and BJ, you're right. BJ wrote in, in the chat room that people are are yes. scared of scared of commitment. Um, so they don't want so so, so they don't want to commit. Well, and, and and the problem is, I think that you don't. No one forces you to. No, there isn't. There Nowadays, isn't. Nowadays, there's no 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 reason to 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 get married. That you know, people that are are in uh, non traditional relationships want to be married more than people who are, you know, in regular relationships. Yeah, gay people fought the Supreme Court yes, to, to be in right. that sort of relationship where where straight people take that same you know what that's and that is the funniest thing for me. They, they take it you know lightly. Like, a lot of straight people, a lot of straight Christian people raised all sorts of hell to keep that from happening. But what we find out is that Christian marriages uh, in a divorce about the same frequency as non-Christian marriages. Mm-hmm. So the people who are screaming, screaming the loudest to stop all that don't take their marriages seriously either. Exactly. So maybe it's time for some introspection on, 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 on what we're doing and how we treat dating, like we've started how we treat dating and how we treat the whole process up up until marriage including cohabitation is it a good idea you know what it's a good idea i can't tell you if it's a good idea i can just look at the numbers and say it doesn't work most of the time it doesn't deliver what people think it does it doesn't deliver it doesn't deliver what it seems to promise it doesn't promise you that he's that you're going to get married Nope, not even a that. A lot of people think that just because you he moves in with you or you or she moves in with you that she's going to marry you, that it doesn't guarantee that. Why would they? That like my mom used to say, "Why buy, buy the cow when you get the milk for free?" <laughs> <laughs> that it is doesn't so guarantee marriage. That's one thing that a lot of people think. If I move in with him, then you know we'll get married one day. Well, sometimes they just dangle they give you that ring and dangle it in front of you and that's it if you if you even get a ring if you even get a ring it it it, it, it ends up being a long-term uh roommate situation where you have sex Mm -hmm. with benefits and then you get and then people have the nerve to get hurt (laughs) and then people have the nerve to get hurt I, th- I think part of the I think also I think also part of the problem is that that in today's culture, um, it's it, it is it's become the next step in relationships. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's the it's the meet at Starbucks. It is you know with, with friends, and then it's the, and it's the dating, and then the next step seems to be then you move in, move in together. It just seems we're gonna try it out. <laughs> Test drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what, and, and, and I, I think that that's become part of the thing mm-hmm. that 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 that's the next step in the next step in a relationship, as opposed to dating and getting to know each other, and then getting married, as opposed to the as opposed to what we have now. That 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 piece has been dropped in, and people are almost like, well, we can't get married. We haven't even lived together yet. That's why people are like, oh, we can't get married. We haven't even had sex yet. That piece has been dropped in uh, now as normal. Um, what does she say? Some don't take marriage as serious now. There's um, open marriage thing. Yes, that's another thing about open marriage. Yeah, I don't even, that's another topic. I don't we'll even, deal with that. I don't even know. I don't even know what that means. That means that 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 you get married to somebody, but but you can still have sex with anybody you want. So I get married. <laughs> just, hey. That's what I had said about, you know, a comment about a, 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 a 
acquaintance that I know of, you know, they're getting ready to get into their third marriage, which there are a lot of people that are on their third marriage. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, because some people don't mature enough until they get to the third marriage and it could work out. But it seems like this person just marries people for sport. And, you know, it's like, that's why? Ex- that's an expensive sport. <laughs> it is. And but why even raise get horses married? Or something. <laughs> it, I mean, it, if, you know, if my son always says that if he wasn't a Christian, that he probably wouldn't get married. You know, he would probably just date. And when he's tired of that person, you just push him to the side. Push him to the side. Just push him to the side. I'm done with you. You're boring. <laughs> just, you bore me. Yes, off with you. Off with you. <laughs> Why even put go through the expense of paying for marriage and all the things that go with it if you're not going to be committed? Commitment is what marriage is about. Well, and, and you know, it, it's like one of the first things that, that, that you and I said when we started when, when we started this project is that love is a decision, not a feeling. Mm-hmm. And so that so the idea of that you have to commit that's a decision that you make. And that's a decision that you have to make a little bit every day. And that's a lot. And I think that we have, we have, we have, we have young people who are in this sort of suspended adolescence and that we don't ask them to commit to anything. And they practice doing that. You know, you guys, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a musician. So I really believe that whatever you do, whatever you practice is what you do. Um, So we don't ask them to do that. We're okay. We, you know, parents tell their children, well, date as many people as you can, as, as you want, because that's good. Date a lot of people. So people date a lot of people. They break up a lot. They practice. So they practice that. So when everything, so when everything gets boring, when everything get a little, get uncomfortable, uncomfortable, like like uh, Gary was talking. People yesterday. bail. Things are uncomfortable. You don't want to stay in it. People bail because they can. And 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 marriage. It it's tough. It can get it, it can get a little. Uh, it sometimes. can be painful. So a lot of people, you know, I'm done with this, and I can see that, you know. And and, and because they have practiced, they have practiced breaking up, and it's become easier and easier to do. We saw a sign on the street that you can get a divorce for ninety nine dollars. Yeah, <laughs> you can call this up and get a divorce for ninety nine dollars. You you spend twenty seven thousand dollars on the wedding, but you can get out for ninety nine. <laughs> you were married for seventy two days. <laughs> seventy two days, but you can get out for ninety nine dollars. Ninety nine dollars, uh, one buck short of a hundred. Uh, it's 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 so easy to get out because it, for those people have practiced breaking up, um, and parents incur. It just drives me nuts to see parents encouraging their children not. But I mean, they don't commit to anything though. They mm-hmm. don't commit to, to a job to um to like okay so you take lessons for a while and then it gets hard so they quit they, they you know what they play baseball literally baseball or football and they don't play as much as they they can or it gets hard or inconvenient so they quit um anything that may get hard and you may have to push through they quit so they take advanced classes and it's too hard and because they have to actually do the freaking homework and they go, well, I don't want to do that anymore. And, uh, so it's they quit. Too much. It's too, too much. Too much. <laughs> too much. Anyway, uh, that's an inside joke. So, so that's the deal. The deal is that, yes, the, that, that we, have a, we have a culture that quits. Now, I ain't going to blame them. I'm going to blame you, mom. I'm going to blame you, dad. I'm going to blame you, grandma and grandpa, because we let them quit. We let them quit. Um, When they get on the team and they don't play, and they quit. No. Our our son played a lot more in his junior year at Armwood than he did his senior year. Mm -hmm. Um, But he wasn't going to quit. He practiced like everybody else. He practiced as much as his senior year as he did his junior year, probably more. Played against D one, played against kids who were D one. Uh, my son was not a D one prospect from, from the beginning, and that was fine. But he loved to play, and he loved to be a part of the team. Uh, and, he, and I don't think he ever thought about not playing, not playing, not going to that Thanksgiving practice, not going to Thanksgiving practice. Week. Now we say that we, we mean a practice on Thanksgiving Day. That morning, they <laughs> that morning. get up. And they go practice. So, um, 
So, so the deal is that we that, that we have a culture of we have a culture of quitting. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's so easy to get out of marriages. And that's why people get out of it in, in their head. That's why and they why welcome people it. People want to live together because it's easy and not marry. They make that that exit ramp is built in that you can leave whenever you want. You don't have to stay. And that's I think that that's I think that that's incredibly problematical. I don't think that's the way to go. Uh, just for the, just for that reason, even though we did it, which, which, which we're not perfect, which which tells me that I don't think necessarily that, that that's the way to go. Now, y'all can do whatever you want because you're going to nothing. I can do to stop. You. And another thing, you know, it gets to be complacent. Um, sometimes you, you because you start living together, then you kind of forget about the commitment part and that you don't want to um, get married. You know, it's easier, like he said, it's, you don't want to do the tough stuff. So it's easier just to cohabitate, live together, and and not take on the responsibilities of, of uh, being married and, and the legal parts and stuff and All the commitment. Stuff. All that stuff, because now you have to commit. I'll tell you what, uh, it's about time to go. I'll tell you what, we, um on our, on, on our marriage day, and we've both, we, we've talked about this a, a, num a number of times. Um, we didn't, and I don't, I don't even know why. I just because we thought because we thought it was cute. Uh, we didn't stay at the apartment. You didn't stay at the at the apartment um, the night before we got married. Um, but we got married that act, that that morning that afternoon, and we went back to our apartment for the reception that was in the clubhouse. And um, everybody left, and we were waiting on Joe from Marie <laughs> to get a toaster. <laughs> That we already yeah. had. <laughs> we had one exactly Stop. like it. Anyway, um, but we both said when we got back to the apartment, now we had been living in that apartment for a while. Mm -hmm. But when we got back, because we had made a commitment in front of all these folks, that his parents, my friends, um, we had made this a commit commitment, it was different. It just felt it just felt different. Because it's a spiritual thing. Because we had we had made this commitment, and it was it, it was not this it was not the same. So if you think it's just going to be more of the same, uh, I don't I don't think you're right. I think you're wrong. Um, from my, my experience, that you're going to be wrong. That you're going to get married and and you go, well, it's just a piece of paper. No, it's not just a piece of paper. It isn't. It's not just a contract. It isn't just something that you pay a few dollars. To the, I mean, to the state or or, or or the county to do. It's not. It's not just a notary stamp. It's a commitment. It's a spiritual thing, like, like Debbie said. So it's much, much different. So and living together doesn't make it easier. As a matter of fact, the the, the numbers say that that more people that, that you're you're less more likely, likely to get a divorce. That you're less likely to stay together after after cohabitation. So if you're interested in being married for thirty years to the same person, now thirty years, uh, five people doesn't five people doesn't count. <laughs> I like bro man, fifth flow. Uh it, it, it doesn't count. No. <laughs> I'm sorry that that doesn't count. Um, so the idea is that maybe you really, really want to consider what we're saying here. Um uh, for somebody that's you know, for people who've been down that road. All right. Uh you got anything to add before we um um bail out of here because you gotta go to work or you gotta wake Alex up and then you gotta take you taking me to work, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna finish up. I'll be over here. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Remember need, to to, to like, coffee. comment, share this video with your friends. You know, you you never know what people <laughs> please share. <laughs> share. Because sharing is caring. <laughs> and go to our YouTube channel. Yes, please. We have a YouTube channel that we share these videos as well as other uh family activities that we do. And it might be entertaining to you. You want to laugh or something? Go on and, and watch some of our, our we were shopping, <laughs> shopping we videos. We were shopping and, together. And uh, <laughs> different things that we do together. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so, if it, so, so if you'll do that, that'll be great. Go to YouTube, subscribe, like. We need 14 more people to get to 50. I'm a big milestones person. 50 will be cool now. 50 doesn't give us any money, but we'll buy any of that stuff. 
this 50 looks nice when you say 50 subscribers. I just like doing it. And it's fun. <laughs> it is fun. All right, listen, we ain't got to hear make room for somebody else. Until we see you again, go out love there and learn to, learn to love somebody. And for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. Peace. Wait, button, button. Who's got the button? There it is. I, it worked. It's a nail. <laughs> see, it didn't work. Told you. What the heck? Now we're now we're stuck in this Facebook Live forever. <laughs> Help us! Somebody call somebody. There you go. <laughs>